Does this Pfizer executive have any filters or boundaries at all? Project Veritas hit the jackpot with this guy. Something irregular about their menstrual cycle, so people have to investigate that down the line. Yeah. Well, because that is a little concerning. It, the vaccine shouldn't be interfering with that, so we don't really... It, know it shouldn't? It shouldn't, my God. But is it? There's something happening, but we don't know what's figure out. Well, I mean, you're a urologist, so you must understand, like, what's going on with it, right? Like, well, that's why I understand that it's weird. I hope we don't find out that, like, there's somehow this mRNA, like, lingers in the body, and then it, like, has... Because, what it has to be impacting something hormonal, stuff. They impact menstrual cycles. Yeah, or, like, the entire next generation is, like, super fucked up. Could you imagine the scandal? Oh, my God. I'd be, I'd take Pfizer off my resume. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but wasn't this whole entire shifting of the women's menstrual cycles with the vaccine wasn't that a conspiracy theory mm -hmm. yeah i mean i haven't been keeping a track of everything but it seems like just two seconds ago that seemed to be a conspiracy theory but he seems like pfizer's pretty concerned about that and that they're looking into this pretty specifically and if you were worried that about any of the gain of function stuff he makes sure that he revisits that very subject yet again he says, wouldn't it be crazy, crazy if it effed up the entire next generation? This is the one of the main scientists. This reminds me of that, that meme where a doctor's with his patient and he says, oh, turns out that uh, new data is showing that this gives you myocarditis. And the patient said, but I already took the shot. And he says, yeah, that's where we got the new data. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they meant oh by gosh. experimental. Mm -hmm. But... Let's see what they have to say about gain-of-function research. So, um, tell me more, like, what's developing with the whole, you know, virus mutation process? Mm -hmm. Well, they're still kind of conducting the experiments on it, but uh, it seems like from what I've heard, they're kind of optimizing it, but they're growing slow, they were very cautious, like, you know. Right. I was going to kind of accelerate it too much. Yeah. Um, but I think they're also just trying to do it as an exploratory thing because you obviously don't want to advertise that you're trying to figure out future mutations. I would yes, obviously you don't want to advertise that you're trying to figure out future mutations here. So he kind of reinstills the fact that yes, in fact, they are looking for those gains in function and trying to predict where this is going so they can make the vaccine before that variant even comes out and get to the market ahead of everyone. That way they can corner that market for how many ever months leading to that new mutation mm -hmm. whenever it may be mutated or released or and it's, however you want to talk about it's it. It's also worth mentioning that later on in the video, the reporter asks him, do you think that F the um, Pfizer will have to pay for any of the injuries, you know, from the vaccine? And he says, no, I don't think so. I Definitely not. Yeah, and their emergency use, use authorization, so we didn't already know, no, they don't have to pay for any of those injuries, and they got protections. The minute they said that it was approved for children, there's some type of other magical protections mm -hmm. that they benefit from, and that was the main reason for them pushing for that, to ensure that Pfizer was fully protected. But ironically, I don't even think it's the biggest story. As if we needed another window into social media, finally Twitter has unthrottled these videos, or better yet, taken their thumb off the scale. And over on Twitter, they have 30 million views on the original video that dropped on this. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we look over on YouTube before they got banned. They got banned, I think, six days ago or something, or maybe it was a few days ago. They got banned off of YouTube, and meaning they got a strike and can't post for seven days. And they only had, I think, 800,000 views at that time. They should have had millions of views, even on YouTube, even with what was going on on Twitter. And then over on Facebook, we looked, and what's going on with this post on Facebook? This broke an hour ago. Yeah, I tried to share it onto my Facebook page, onto our Freedom Families United page. And I went to the Project Veritas, um, their page, and you go, and it's a public post, and it has no share button. And I'm like, um, okay, the share button's gone. It's public. I should be able to share. So I tried to copy and paste it. You cannot copy and paste their their posts. So I went to a few other websites or a few other pages, main pages like the Daily Wire and whatnot. Yep, copy and paste. Yep, you can share. What is it? Huh? What about Project Veritas that we can't share? So they're trying to choke out the truth on every so other social media platform. And this should be the biggest story in the world right now. Everybody should want to get to the bottom of this, especially if you took 
this vaccine. Don't you think you would want just the truth? Mm -hmm. That's all you're asking for, truth and transparency. And that well, seems to be something guy, in very short supply. This guy, even at the end, he says the pressures from the government, from, from Pfizer, from c the community, society, and from people's jobs. He said, even I would have gotten fired. This guy would have gotten fired from Pfizer if he didn't take their own vaccine. And he has doubts about it, about its efficacy, about the mRNA lingering in people's bodies and maybe crossing the blood-brain barrier, maybe causing hormonal influences. And I guarantee his conversations he has with his friends and coworkers are much more educated and informed than mm -hmm. those that you've had in private with your friends and family. The circles he runs in, he's one of the highest people at Pfizer. Obviously, he's been privy to some of the most intelligent conversations on the vaccine and on the on COVID-19 itself. Oh, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, I thought that was very telling that he said that he had gotten it. He seemed very sincere. I had no reason. A lot of people, there's conspiracies running around. Oh, none of these guys actually got the vaccine. None of them actually got it. It's all fake. They all know it. No, you don't realize they fully believe in it too. They, this man would probably be equally upset if mm -hmm. everything starts going wrong with his health oh, in the future. And he, he even said that. He even said, I would take Pfizer off of my resume if this blew up into a scandal, if it was actually hurting a bunch of people. But... We'll see how this unfolds. Uh, covering stories like this certainly isn't helping our channel. <laughs> I know we've already uh, got hit a few times and had stuff taken down, and I know definitely the thumb is on the scale against it. But uh, if you're still here, like, share, subscribe, and help us fight the anti-freedom, anti-family algorithms over here. And until next time, stay, stay free. free.